behalf of St. Cyr Methodist Seminary and the Orange Lake Schools, we welcome you to uh, our campus for the diaconate ordination of one of our seminarians, Adam Kotas, in the presence of all our campus, uh, the prep, the seminary, and the Polish mission, and all the people uh, who are associated with the Orange Lake Schools, as well as the family and friends of uh, Adam Kotas. So we appreciate you taking the time to come and be with us and for us to witness this ceremony in our chapel. My brothers and sisters, we gather this morning as God's family, his sons and daughters, brothers and sisters who believe in and accept Jesus Christ as our risen Lord and Savior. And we gather in our common faith to ask God to send the Holy Spirit upon Adam Kodas for the ordination to the transitory of the Advent, in anticipation of his ordination to the priesthood. And so we begin our prayer by placing ourselves in the presence of the Lord, there we acknowledge our weaknesses, our failings, and our sins, then open our hearts to receive his mercy, forgiveness, and love. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in my own faults, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, and that I have chosen to bear your religion, all the angels of saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. <coughs> Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Right. Most Reverend Father, Bishop Walsh, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain this man, Adam Kotas, our brother, for service as deacon. And do you judge him to be worthy? After inquiry among the people of Christ, and upon recommendation of those concerned with this training, I can testify that he has been found worthy. We rely on the help of the Lord God and of our Savior Jesus Christ, and we choose this man, Adam, our brother, for the order of deacons. Thanks be to God. especially our soon-to-be deacon, Adam. This is a great moment of grace in the life of our deacon-to-be, Adam Kotas, and in the life of the young missionary church of Santa Rosa. It is a moment of grace because Christ, the Good Shepherd, is present to his church providing a minister to care for his people. It is a moment of grace because Adam will have his call to orders, that divine call given by Christ, confirmed by the church through her prayer and the laying on of hands. The word of God from the book of Numbers takes us back to the designation of the tribe of Levi as assistance to the high priest Aaron. The Levites were chosen as a tribe or family to serve the tabernacle on behalf of the people. Today it is not ancestry, heritage, or tribe that God chooses men to serve, but through an individual call, a divine vocation. Every vocation, but especially the vocation to holy orders, is a great mystery. It is a mystery of divine election. Jesus told his apostles, you did not choose me, but I chose you 
and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should last. The author of the letter to Hebrews reminds us of the divine choice behind this election. And one does not take this honor upon himself, but he was called by God just as Aaron was. The ordination today confirms for our future deacon and priest what God said to Jeremiah the prophet. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. And Adam, through this ordination, you accept this call of God to serve him and his people throughout your whole life. By this ordination, you are committed to serve the Lord and his people. Jesus tells us in the gospel, if anyone would serve me, let him follow me. Where I am, there will my servant be. Through this ordination and through your ministry, you are to be intimately joined to Jesus Christ, to be where he is, to serve as he served. And as St. Paul reminds us in the first reading, you are, commend, you are to commend yourself as a servant of God, ready to face and endure anything either good or bad, in order to serve God and serving his people. You are to be a grain of wheat that dies to yourself, your own wishes, your own inclinations, your own desires, your own agenda, so that much fruit will be produced. In your future ministry as deacon and priest, you, like St. Paul, must put your service to the people ahead of any personal desire or need. In your future life, you will face challenges and difficulties. As he says, for you, for to you it has been granted for Christ's sake, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake, experiencing the same conflict which you saw in me, and now here bear to me in Christ. You die to yourself for Christ and his people through the promises you make at this ordination to God, to the church, and to me and my successors as your bishop. By your free choice, you commit yourself to a life of celibacy as a sign of your dedication to Christ and of the pastoral ministry and charity to his people. This vow of celibacy must re be renewed each day as you strive to be one with Jesus in the service of the people. <clears throat> Do not consider celibacy a burden imposed by church discipline or an impossible demand that cannot be lived but rather consider it a joyful gift to Christ so that you can be united to him completely and totally without any reservation. It will enable you to serve Christ and his people he commits to your care. Embrace this commitment with enthusiasm and generosity and be willing to make any sacrifice so that you will remain faithful to this daily act of love for Christ and his people. You will promise to assist the bishop and priest in ministering to the people. You promise to be a servant, one who...
Bishop Walsh, on behalf of St. Cyr Methodist Seminary and the Orange Lake Schools, we welcome you to uh, our campus for the diaconate ordination of one of our seminarians, Adam Kotas, in the presence of all our campus, uh, the prep, the seminary, and the Polish mission, and all the people uh, who are associated with the Orange Lake Schools, as well as the family and friends of uh, Adam Kotas. So appreciate you taking the time to come and be with us and for us to witness this ceremony in our chapel. My brothers and sisters, we gather this morning as God's family, his sons and daughters, brothers and sisters who believe in and accept Jesus Christ as our risen Lord and Savior. And we gather in our common faith to ask God to send the Holy Spirit upon that of us for the ordination to the transitory of the Advent, in anticipation of his ordination to the priesthood. And so we begin our prayer by placing ourselves in the presence of the Lord, there we acknowledge our weaknesses, our failings, and our sins, then open our hearts to receive his mercy, forgiveness, and love. Blind obedience, you cannot bear fruit in your ministry. You must surrender your own will, your own freedom to serve the people of God in a most fruitful way. As you look ahead, you cannot imagine where your bishop and the church might send you or what they might ask of you. I can testify to that personally. But today, you can resolve to accept whatever is asked of you in grateful and generous obedience. Renew that surrender of your own each day, and you will bear much fruit. In short, Adam, today you promise your life to Christ and to his church. You will be faithful to Christ in these promises, if you are faithful to the church. What will, you, what will sustain you over the years in this ministry, in this commitment, in this promise of love? One thing, prayer. The letter of St. Peter tells us, remain calm so you will be able to pray. Nothing, no crisis, no problem, no situation, can interfere with your life of prayer. You promise to pray for the church and in the name of the church in the liturgy of the hours. I highly recommend that you spend some time each day before the Blessed Sacrament in personal conversation with Christ, your Lord and brother. Prayer is a constant thread that will make your ministry fruitful and joyful. I am reminded today of a question that was asked of Blessed Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Some person asked her, what is your secret, Mother? She says, my secret is simple. I pray. Today, commit yourself to a life of prayer that will keep you close to Christ and make you a fit minister in this church. Take to heart the words of Pope Benedict XVI. The effectiveness of pastoral action depends ultimately on prayer. Otherwise, service becomes empty activism. Adam, as you step forward for ordination today, my prayer for you is the prayer of St. Paul. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to completion. enter the order of deacons. You shall exercise this ministry in the celibate state 
For celibacy is both a sign and a motive of pastoral charity and a special source of spiritual fruitfulness in the world. By living in this state with total dedication, moved by a sincere love for Christ the Lord, you are to consecrate to Him and you are to be you are to consecrate it to Him in a new and special way. By this consecration, you will adhere more easily to Christ with an undivided heart. You will be more freely at the service of God and mankind, and you will be more untrampled in the ministry of Christian conversion and rebirth. By your life and character, you will give witness to your brothers and sisters in faith that God must be loved above all else, and that is, it is He whom you serve in others. Therefore, I ask you, in the presence of God and the church, are you resolved as a sign of your interior dedication to Christ to remain celibate for the sake of the kingdom and in lifelong service to God and mankind? I am. May God help you to persevere in this commitment. Amen. My son, before you are ordained deacon, you must declare before the people your intentions to undertake this office. Are you willing to be ordained for the, the church's ministry by the laying on of hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? I am. Are you resolved to discharge the office of deacon with humility and love in order to assist the bishop and the priest and to serve the people of Christ? I am. Are you resolved to hold the mystery of faith with a clear conscience as the apostle urges and to proclaim this faith in word and action as it is taught by the gospel and the church's tradition? Are you resolved to main, maintain and deepen a spirit of prayer appropriate to your way of life and in keeping with what is required of you to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours for the church and for the whole world? I am. Are you resolved to shape your way of life always according to the example of Christ whose body and blood you will give to the people? Him with the help of God. Adam, do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to completion. <coughs> My dear people, let us pray that our all-powerful Father will pour out his blessings on the servant of his, whom he receives into the order of deacons. Amen. Uh -huh. 
sanctivatorum spiritum ordines. Ora te prodomis. Sancte Annes Baptista. Ora prodomis. Sancte Joseph. Ora prodomis. Omnes Sancti Patriarche et Profete.
Sancti Sacerdotes et Divitae. Ora te promovis. Ole Sancti Monachi et Eremite. Ora te promovis. Santa Maria Magdalena. Ora promovis. Santa Agata. Santa Lucia, ora pro nobis. Santa Agnes, ora pro nobis. Santa Cecilia, ora pro nobis. Santa Catarina, ora pro nobis. Santa Anastasia. Sante Virgine Servidue, ora te pronomis. Omne Santi et Sante Dei, ora te pronomis. Provisius Esco, arce nobis nomine. Provisius Esco,
Ciam, nos perduciara dignaris, erogamus abrigos. Un ecclesiam tuam sanctam regere, et conservara dignaris, erogamus abrigos. Un domnum apostolicum, et domnes ecclesiasticos ordines, in santa religione conservare di Nieris, e rogamus a Dinos, o di nimico santa ecclesia cumiliare di Nieris, e rogamus a Dinos, o regibus et principius cristianis pacem, et veram concordiam donare di Nieris, Cristiano pacem, et unitatem lactili dignieris, erogamus a Dinos. Ud omnes erantes, ad unitatem ecclesia revocare, et in fideles universos, ad evangelium en perducere dignieris, Mentipsos in tuo santo servizio confortare et conservare ad ignaris, erogamus a Dinos. Ud mentes nostras a celestia desideria erigas, erogamus a Dinos. Ud omnibus benefactoribus nostris, Sempiterna voda retribuas, erogamus a Dinos. Ud animas nostras fratrum, propinquorum et benefactorum nostrum, ab eterna damnazione eripias, erogamus a Dinos. Ud fructus terre dare, Conservare di Nieris, erogamus a Dinos. Ud omnibus fidelibus de funcionis rectiem eternam donare di Nieris, erogamus a Dinos. Ud nos exaudire di Nieris,
We judge this man worthy to serve as deacon, and we ask you to bless him and make him holy. Grant this through Christ our Lord. God, be present with us by your power. You are the source of all honor. You assign to each his rank and give to each his ministry. Almighty God, be present with us by your power. You are the source of all honor. You assign to each his rank. You give to each his ministry. You remain unchanged, but you watch over all creation and make it new through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is your word, your power, and your wisdom. You foresee all things in your eternal providence and make you provision for every age. You make the church, Christ's body, grow to its full stature as a new and greater temple. You enrich it with every kind of grace and perfect it with a diversity of members to serve the whole body in a wonderful pattern of unity. You establish a threefold ministry of worship and service for the glory of your name. As ministers of your tabernacle, you choose the sons of Levi and gave them your blessing as their everlasting inheritance. In the first days of the church, you under, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the apostles of your son appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministry so that they may, themselves might be more free for prayer and preaching. By prayer and the laying on of hands, the apostles entrusted to these chosen men the ministry of serving at tables. Look with favor on Adam, the servant of yours, whom we now dedicate to the office of deacon to minister at your holy altar. Lord, send forth your, upon him the Holy Spirit, that he may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace to carry out faithfully the work of the ministry. May he excel in every virtue, in love that is sincere, in concern for the sick and the poor, in unassuming authority, in self-discipline, and in holiness of life. May his conduct exemplify your commandments and lead your people to imitate his purity of life. May he remain strong and steadfast in Christ, giving to the world the witness of a pure conscience. May he in this life imitate your son who came not to be served, but to serve, and one day reign with him in heaven we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you now are. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. So if you think about it, it's something to uh, consider and to talk to a, a priest about. But we hope that uh, this ceremony was, uh, though it was long, was an inspiration. Uh, to all of you uh, who have not always had the opportunity to witness the ordination uh, to the diaconate. And Mr. Gorlacki? Your Excellency, on behalf of the prep, we are very, very honored to have you celebrate Mass with our whole St. Mary's family today. I'm sure that in your travels you're aware that there is not only a, a national tradition but an international tradition uh, and a Catholic tradition that when a visiting bishop comes, he does have the power bestowed strictly by God himself to be able to, uh, to give the boys not only a half day but a day off. And I promise the guys that they responded well today and, and you found that they were on their, their A game that I would, uh, I would come up and ask you on their behalf if we could go out after your words and enjoy this wonderful sunny day and maybe put a, a half day in the bank to be used later. I would rather give a day and a half. <laughs> I would like to acknowledge the faculty, the rector of St. Philip Authorities Seminary for the fine work they do for the church in the United States. They are most grateful. I know it's a challenging uh, vocation you have, a challenging job, but God is with you and we thank you for all that you do here for uh, the seminarians and uh, the potential seminarians. Now I think I might need my minor enclosure. <laughs> well, we're going to do a Te Deum in Polish. Amen. The Mass is ended. You may go in peace. Amen.